Hello everyone, welcome to this collection of uh, GRE Verbal Ability and uh, in this lesson we would be dealing with the basics of sentence completion. I am your uh, educator Bhuvi Jain from An Academy. You could follow me at this link given below. I have taken the GRE when I was uh, in doing my engineering. So in 87 I have taken my GRE. The pattern has changed. But one thing remains the same and that is that you have to really work on your words. Now the basics of sentence completion are that first you have to read the sentence or the group of sentences that are there in front of you very carefully. Slowly imbibe every word that you read. Assess the flow of the sentence. See how the words go and see the trend of the statement. Look for verbal and punctuation cues which will help you determine what the word that you have to fill in has to be, the genre of the word. And if you are very, very sure, unless you are very, very certain that a particular choice is totally not appropriate, you do not strike it off your mind, right? If you are very certain that, yeah, this word just does not fit, it doesn't make any sense in this situation, then you mentally strike off that word and deal with the other choices that are given to you. Now, for example, let us just pick up the first example of the series. Enid Blyton was one of the dash writers of children's books, having written over 750 books in her lifetime, almost double that of her contemporaries. The choices in front of you are celebrated, famous, prolific, eclectic, and bombastic. Now start analyzing this sentence. What is the information you glean from that sentence which has been given to you? One is that Enid Blyton has written a lot of books. The second is that the number of books she has written is almost double that of people in her times. So what are you looking for? We are looking for something that possibly fits with the above information and definitely something that has a positive connotation to it. So we have identified something about the word that we have to fill in the blank. Now let us try to analyze that situation. I have just written a small synopsis of the sentence so that for recall value. Now pick up celebrated. What is the meaning of celebrated? Celebrated is someone who is famous. Now she was famous all right, yes. So, uh, is it the perfect choice? I don't know, but it seems like a good choice. So, I'll write maybe. Now, does famous fit? Since celebrated fit, so famous also fits because they both are uh, synonyms of each other. So, yeah. So, this also goes under maybe. Now, let me pick up the word prolific. What is prolific? Prolific is someone who writes a lot. A prolific writer is someone who writes a lot. Now, this fits in totally, right? If, she, if somebody, one of the most prolific writers who has written over 750 books, it seems to fit very well. So for me right now, this is a yes, because this seems to be a good answer to it. Now let us pick up eclectic. Who is eclectic? A person who derives ideas from a wide range of sources. Now does this fit in in this sentence right now? I don't think so. So for me, it's a total no. I'm crossing out this choice. Then you come to bombastic. What is bombastic? A bombastic person is somebody who uses high sounding words with little meaning. Does that sound like what we are trying to say about Enid Blyton? Not at all. And knowing the person she was? No, not at all. I'm not having anyone say that about my favorite author. So no, we cross this out. But here I'm wrong because... When we encounter a sentence, we don't take our feelings into account. We take the feelings of the person who has written the sentence into account. So the reason I'm striking off bombastic is not because I don't agree that Enid Blyton was bombastic, but because this does not fit in this situation. So what do we have now? We have two maybes, two no's and one like a very good fit. So what do we do? I would go with the choice of prolific and I would enter prolific in the blank and move on to the next sentence. So this is the kind of strategy that you are looking for when you fill up a blank, when you do the sentence completion. What you have to do is read 
read properly carefully and look for trigger words that determine the flow of the sentence then secondly you determine if that trigger word is moving the flow in a positive direction or in a negative direction then you determine if the word that has been asked of you is a positive word or a negative word or what kind of a word it is now if you are not able to understand what to put in the choice then you just clear your head and just cover all the choices with one hand and then look at the sentence and see what you would put in in that situation think of a word then look for a word that means that word in the choices that are given below and try to complete the sentence in this fashion with these kind of strat strategy in front of you you should be able to attempt a lot of questions how do we recognize a trigger word now let us take another example mosquito repellents are known to cause tumors and are therefore often classified as drugs carcinogenic phlegmatic fanciful systematic now drugs do cause tumors but not all drugs cause tumors and it doesn't seem to fit in this sentence carcinogenic is something that causes cancer and yes tumors are caused tumors are uh, you know a side effect of cancer so it seems to fit pretty well what is phlegmatic phlegmatic actually comes from the word phlegm phlegm is something that doesn't come out so a phlegmatic person is a person who is, doesn't come out so he is a person who is very quiet and reserved so phlegmatic just doesn't fit in this situation so forget about phlegmatic fanciful doesn't fit in this situation systematic also doesn't fit in this situation so we are left with drugs which could be a maybe and carcinogenic which is a total yes so we go in for carcinogenic this is how you have done it now the trigger word therefore was therefore in that sentence it was telling us the way the direction in which it was moving so there are some words that go with the flow so like therefore thus there are punctuation symbols like the colon semicolon since so so you take a screenshot of this and crop it and save it for future reference similarly there are words which go against the flow like although yet unfortunately they all tell you some something was going to happen but it didn't happen kind of a thing so they are going against the flow again take a screenshot and save it for future use so what we have done here is that we have identified some sample trigger words just for starters then we have under you have to understand that complexity will increase as the number of blanks increases because there will be three choices per blank and there will be more blanks so you have more confusion so your approach needs to be very structured so you have to do what you need to do is you have to follow the read mantra read 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 and you have to practice practice and more practice go on to the internet take examples and start doing and until we come out with the next lesson where you would be able to learn some more tricks all the best until then